So the takeaway being, uh, don't stick to one provider, consider other options, use apps like PlugShare to figure out where there might be other options, look at the other networks. Uh... Welcome back to Plug and Play EV. This is our report from Thanksgiving road trip travel all the way from Boston, Massachusetts down to around Pittsburgh area. A little time in Pittsburgh and then some travel back up north. Not as cold as we expected perhaps this time of year, but certainly some very full stations, a lot of uh, activity and travel uh, traffic. So let's jump into what we saw, how we approached this uh, Thanksgiving travel a little bit differently than previous years and uh, what it might mean for your Christmas travel. Let's go. Hundred percent on the clock. We've got about 300 miles to go today. Maybe 320, I think it was. Probably should have got one before we preheated the cabin and stuff. But uh, you can see we're up at a reasonably healthy 44 degrees Fahrenheit on the average here, and up to 48 on the max. 39 on the min. So both of those are a little bit low um, for fast charging. We're going to have to see how that changes. This is our first really. I say cold, it's not super cold, but cold enough to really impact the battery uh, when you're at those 40 degree temperatures. Ambient, it gives the battery a decent uh, leg up on getting to that kind of 70 degrees Fahrenheit area that it would like to be at for fast charging so that you don't really see any dropped rates. Uh, we did see a couple yesterday, a little bit lower, but because it was in that 40 to 50, it doesn't take the battery that long to heat up on a fast charge session. Uh, as we get into winter here and the temperatures being consistently below freezing, we'll have to see how that plays into the battery charging along the way with fast chargers and uh, how long it's going to take to do charge sessions. They're only a little bit longer at the moment, maybe four or five minutes. And uh, unless we get the preconditioning update, that will continue to uh, get worse and worse. Uh, another one of the benefits of destination charging, which will just keep on plugging home, it usually helps you cut out a fast charge session and uh, just happens while you sleep. So that's uh, a benefit on most EV road trips. So one of the first things that we were really glad we did was uh, book the hotel for the first night uh, down with uh, Destination Charging. Stayed there a few times. It's in the uh, border area of Pennsylvania, New Jersey, New York, Matamoros, Pennsylvania. And uh, it's a good place that's uh, got two J1772 connectors, couple of Tesla connectors. Uh, one of the J1772s was offline, but we only had another Tesla with us there charging, so we were able to use that. Even if that had been down, we would have been able to use our Tesla adapter to take advantage of the Tesla destination charger. So that started us off really nicely with a full charge to uh, head on into more Pennsylvania. Did still need to use a couple of EA stations and we did get find some kind of congested as we got along there to State College especially. But that gave us a really good jump starting the day with 200, 220 miles on the GOM safely to get into Pennsylvania, into the middle and really start to uh, use those fast charging sessions smartly. It does, what does it fire up to? Haven't got Talk Pro hooked up here so just have to kind of wing it but we were at a pretty comfortable 72 degrees and it wasn't cooling down too fast so we should get some pretty nice rates here this is the 350 kilowatt and that's not bad at all for 17 percent i need the restroom but uh plugged in started up first time here so no problems and uh time to take a break all right just to prove it is possible in colder weather 
238 kilowatts, that ties up the best we've seen. So once you warm up that pack, you uh, are okay for that. Even then, it's not winter, it's not the coldest, but you know, snow's on the ground and staying. So it has been cold. Let me turn on the car. So 239, that's as good as we've seen. And you have another Ionic. In fact, the same as us, except he's from California, so he's done a bit more than we have. I think we'll just hop on. Uh, the good thing about this is Bolt, EV, and Puppy have uh, been able to jump on that one, so that's good news. The guy who was on the other one had Pennsylvania plates, so maybe he's local and was just topping off or didn't have to go too far. And then obviously you've got the Kona on the other side, it's just going to take a little bit longer. So the right cars are on the right uh, stations. I believe this is the 350, uh, the 150 on the other side with the Kona, and the Bolt, because there's only four stations. Uh, being able to use that. Now, interesting to note, we're only just dipping down to around the point where the Bolt EV will max out. So, uh, kind of that comparison, even as it feels slow and we're kind of uh, grinding down here and feel like we should leave, uh, that's what the Bolt EV is going to do on a good day. So, uh, we're on the right stations here, and uh, the only question mark is, should we leave at this point? Should we be getting out of the way? Uh, my only reason for staying a bit longer, aside from the fact that the family are shopping and are going to be on a long break here, is that uh, Bedford, Pennsylvania has been full consistently for the last hour and there are reports of long lines. So I'm wondering if we get as much as we can here, if we'll be able to cut that out completely. Kind of depends on the terrain and uh, what we need to do. For now though, we have had a really good session, hit a good high, and uh, if anyone else shows up, I think we'll get running. Another thing that we found was, uh, you know, really needing to watch the apps and look at which stations were full. So certainly the Electrify America app came in uh, useful there to see which uh, chargers were in use and uh, all charging stations uh, maxed out. Um, but also PlugShare, you know, specifically to see uh, Bedford, Pennsylvania was the one that we really avoided in this trip, uh, mainly because it's in the center. It's one of the only options in that kind of central lower Pennsylvania area on the turnpike there and it's just it was constantly full you know looking at it all the way down as we came it would have been the last one we would have used and they were just saying you know lines of six to eight cars deep uh, one of the charges was offline so obviously that wasn't helping matters and there's just it everything was a red flag about that location to avoid and I'm sure some people watching may have hit that station at some point over the weekend or the last week and seen that to be the case so we uh, we actually charged up higher in State College and just did the last kind of 120 odd miles down to our destination in the Laurel Highlands and we were able to get some charging around that area just to top us off and get us into the uh, Pittsburgh for the final piece of our journey. The biggest thing there was sometimes you may, even if you could have a local charging option, which will get you up to a nice state of charge for your local travel, it may be the case that you just want to avoid certain locations and charge up even more at the previous station. Now that can knock on to other people's travel. You know, you don't really want an EV as we've said before, spending uh, a lot of time getting up to 90 to 100%. But there are cases where you do need that, and I'm kind of starting to balance this out in my head now of when it's appropriate to go to 90, 95% if it's really going to avoid a pit potential pitfall on your journey um, or other locations where you just absolutely need that and there's no way that you can really avoid charging to that high state of charge but you know that kind of emphasizes the point of have these apps have the network providers app have the uh, plug share app and uh, someone who can at least either report to you what's going on or plan a stop in uh, somewhere into your journey for a bio break so that you can take a look at what's going on you know maybe half an hour 45 minutes before you hit that station and plan accordingly.
The final takeaway of this trip was uh, the other networks may be the more opportune uh, charging provider to use when you're on these travels. Um, Electrify America is the go-to, uh, obviously now, with um, not just the locations that they've got crossing the country, but also there's a bunch of these deals out there, whether it's the kind of 250 kilowatt hours, 500 kilowatt hours uh, complimentary that they offer with some models, all the way up to the unlimited charging. Uh, like it or loathe it, it's going to attract people to those uh, networks networks and Electrify America is the one that is giving that away mostly. In Pittsburgh we chose to use an EVgo location, uh, that's an area actually where EVgo has done a little better than uh, some of the locations around us in New England but also they have uh, you know more established presence in the suburbs than Electrify America does in the Pittsburgh area so that actually proved to be a good one to go to it's more expensive but at the same time you know if you can get a charge and it's uh, an opportunity to look at um, some of the other infrastructure for us that was good but also it may just be something that you can do to uh, offset even if you get the free charging with Electrify America uh, you can still go to these EVgo's charge points and if it's more convenient or if it's less congested or less likely to have issues then uh, the convenience factor of those makes it worth paying for. We still found use for locations like the Danbury Connecticut EVgo which is just a solitary uh, CCS plug down there at 50 kilowatts but we needed to do some shopping we had a few things to get and it was one of the only locations in that area without stopping at the super busy Newburgh New York site uh, or the ones that were further up into Connecticut which were going to be a little bit of a bridge too far so some of these uh, 50 kilowatts still can be useful you know if you have that stop where you only really need to add 20 25 kilowatt hours or if you have a longer stop plan for dinner uh, equipment hardware that is uh, rated at that 50 to 62.5 kilowatt may just be fine there may not be a problem there at all i would have liked to have had a charge point fast charger into this trip but mostly those seem to be located on our route at uh, hyundai dealerships and mercedes-benz dealerships neither of which were really in places we would have been able to use as a family of four trying to either eat or have a rest break so not that useful on this trip as a solo traveler i could see using them a little more um, again if they're in that 62 2.5 kilowatt power level sometimes they might be paired so you might be up to 125 kilowatts and that could uh, match something like uh, electrify america location but for the most part just trying to use uh, other options when they made sense and where they may have been a bit less crowded so there's our final stats over thanksgiving weekend 1268 miles we left tuesday afternoon stayed overnight through to wednesday wednesday down to southwest pennsylvania and uh most of the driving on saturday there with that 500 odd mile drive day we arrived back with 64 percent stayed a charge after a big charge in auburn probably more than we needed this is fairly typical of the temperature it was in the 40s a lot did get colder overnight down to freezing but uh, we didn't really have the low temperatures to test the uh, battery heating too bad or how much longer we'd add with uh, a cold weather trip and then uh, as i say about uh, 600 miles each way with a little bit of driving around pittsburgh as well and uh, let's jump into the stats summarizing the trip um fairly pain-free not without its uh hitches with electrify america having a lot of uh busy stations and needing to kind of think about where we needed to go and obviously losing a little bit of power on some of these locations but for the most part it did its job we were able to travel and use the charges when we wanted to use them uh where we wanted to use them and uh, only have a slight course correction on that last um bedford pennsylvania station that we'd uh, had honestly had our eyes on since the start of planning the travel just because we know it's that kind of single location so hopefully there's some takeaways there for holiday travel in general obviously thanksgiving is uh, one of the busiest in the of the year in here in the u.s so that's going to be an exception but it has shown that the current infrastructure just isn't going to cut it as new more and more evs get on the road 
uh, those four stall locations, even if they are all up and running, still get super busy. If one of those pieces of hardware, or worse, two go out, then you're really starting to uh, put a strain on those individual connections. And um, it's just not going to be enough. We're going to need either the existing charge point operators to step in and really uh, up their game, get their maintenance uh, more on point, get reliability and uptime far, far better, and modernize the equipment. You know, as much as it's nice to have those EVGO options in our area, they just aren't really modern enough to uh, cut it as more and more fast charging EVs come on the market. Uh, how did your Thanksgiving trip go? Did you uh, have anywhere to go? Did you rely on the public charging networks? Or was it more local and you were able to rely on destination charging? Uh, let us know your experiences around the country. We're certainly seeing some uh, interesting reports from different areas. Um, ours was successful, but again, not without its uh, interesting points. So let us know down in the comments. We'll have a discussion on uh, Thanksgiving travel and what's to come in the holidays. Thanks for watching. See you in the next one. Cheers. Thank <music> you.